There's some addition reactions. Something about addition reactions I forgot to say earlier. These will usually have a catalyst or something that will make it go that I'm not going to have you worry about. You'd worry about that if you took over. So a couple of these will have other things as part of the reaction. Don't worry about that. You can learn it next year. Just get the basic idea that if you see an alkene and something that has two parts, those two parts will add across the alkene, across the double bond of the alkene. So we see this one. We want to add an H and an I. It's not going to matter what side they go on. You'll get an equivalent molecule. And we usually don't draw H's, so I'll just leave it as that. For the next one, we've got an H and an H. So basically going to get rid of the double bond. Make it an alkane. The top one, we made an alkyl halide. Uh, so again, why does the double bond disappear? The double bond of the double bond, the, pot, the second bond, reach out and grabs half of whatever this structure is. And the, le the thing with the leftover bond attaches in the other position. So that's why the double bond will disappear. So no more alkanes after you finish this, or alkenes after you finish. In this case, we're at an H and an OH. They're unsymmetric looking, but there's two parts to water, the H and the OH, so we're making an alcohol. Um, and I didn't draw in the H, because you don't have to draw in the H's when you do the line diagram. Uh, for this last one, you have a cyclobutene. So we're going to get rid of the double bond, add a Cl on one side and a Cl on the other side. So this would be 1,2-dichlorocyclobutene. Does that help? So when you have a double bond, it's going to be two. Yes. Uh, and when you have one, yeah, you only include one. I'd actually say it a little bit differently. I'd say this has an H and an I, so one side gets an H, other side gets an I. This has a CL and CL, so one side gets a CL, other side gets a CL. So every reagent will have two parts, H and H, so H and H, H and OH, H and OH. So those two parts go symmetrically across the double bond. Um, so you're right, if there's only, if it's an H and a halogen, you're only going to see the halogen in the answer because you don't have to draw the H unless you want to. If you see two halogens, you have to draw the halogens in an organic structure, so you're going to see both of them in the answer. It's different than the free radical halogenation in that, yes, both halogens will actually stick to the molecule. Yeah? And the halogens stick where the double bond was. Is, is where the halogens will be. So we have to put a CL on every part. It can't be totally random, no. Now, if you drew, so this, the following would not be an acceptable answer. You can't draw this. You could draw, you could have drawn that though. Yeah, because through free rotation, it's the same thing. It would make the greater wonder, oh, did you actually know what you were doing? But if you, if you drew this, it meant not only did you have the CLs, you decided to rotate the molecule for some reason, weird reason. <laughs> but you can draw it, and that would be an acceptable answer. Yes? Let's say that H2 was like a CL2. Where would the CL go? If this was CL2, so let's uh, change this problem a little bit. Then you put a CL here, a CL here. Okay. What I had before was an H there and an H there, and I didn't have them drawn yet. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Anything else with this problem? Yeah. 